Hi, I'm Nick. And I'm Mel. I grew up playing outside. And I grew up doing something meaningful, watching movies and TV. I never had cable, and we finally bought a VCR about the same time DVD players hit the market. Throughout our marriage, Mel has sadly missed many of my pop culture references and movie quotes. So it's time to catch up on all the films I missed. Good evening. Good evening. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Woo! We are in 2024. And it is glorious so that, far. It sounds so weird I know, to say weird. that. I, I mean, much like Soylent Green, when it was talking about what the year would be like in yeah. the year 2022 or whatever it was, uh, I often feel that way as we, you know, travel into the future. We are time travelers. We just do it very, very slowly, one second at a time. <laughs> so it'd be interesting to see what this year brings movie-wise, as well as life. Do you know what we're watching this evening? No, I have no idea. I'm guessing maybe it's a New Year's Eve sort of theme. Mm. You're like, oh, maybe that's a good <laughs> idea. That's nice. <laughs> well, um, there's people... New Year's is a lot about resolutions and yeah. change. Okay, for sure. So that's all I'm going to say at this point. Okay. Do That's you... not a clue enough for me to guess anything, <laughs> by the way. I still got it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So the film we're watching tonight is called Enemy Mine. Enemy Mind? Mine. Mine. Enemy Mine. Mm hmm. Nothing. Chirp, I'm looking. I'm, I'm, yeah, chirp, I'm looking chirp. at the <laughs> blank stare. That's that's delightful. I love. I uh, as I always say, I am so glad that I get to experience these with you and like watch these movies afresh with you. <laughs> so, you know, how this much is going to be very fresh. I have I've no, never heard no, of this movie. Okay. All right, all right. Um, do you want to take some guesses as to what it might be about based on the title? Mine, like mining. Minefield? It, I can give you the spelling of the title. It's enemy and typical mm -hmm. spelling in mine is M-I-N-E. Yes. Okay. Not enemy of mine. <laughs> mine enemy. <laughs> no. I... You do have some slight clues about this one. Do... It was just from a couple weeks ago, probably at this point. Oh, I'm going to cry. Um, I don't. Someone it's, else that's, said this that. This is the one. Um, is it? <laughs> okay. I'm thinking it's like a war movie. A war movie. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And that's as far as I can venture. I have no idea. All right. Do you want to guess like time period do you think the war might be occurring in? Oh, which war will this be? There's been a lot. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. No? Okay. <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. So <laughs> with the very limited knowledge you have, is there anything you're looking forward to about this? <laughs> <laughs> or dreading? Well, I'm always Dealer's excited choice. to see who's in the movie. Okay. So I'm hoping for someone recognizable or someone I enjoy. Yeah, okay. Um, I definitely, you know, I don't know if you're going to recognize these people. I, no. You should, but I don't know if you will immediately. I think I'll have to tell you movies you've seen them in. Okay. Oh, I just gave away there's people in this movie. Is that too much? <laughs> <laughs> well, we now we know it's not animated. <laughs> That's true. Well, it could be. But is there anything you're dreading about this? Thinking it's about a war or anything? <laughs> Um, I mean, war movies are not like my favorite thing. Mm -hmm. I just don't have, I don't know. I think there's like this sort of patriotism ideal mm -hmm. that a war movie tries to tap into sometimes that I mm -hmm. just don't really respond to. I guess that could be something maybe I'm dreading. I'm just fishing here. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Whenever you say patriotism, it, war movie, I immediately think of Bill Pullman's speech in ID4. And I'm like, how can that not get you excited? Oh, no, that moved me. Uh, totally. Okay. okay. No, just totally. making sure you're not dead inside. Got it. No, 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 no. But there's also, I don't know. <laughs> not every speech moves me, gotcha. I guess. Yeah. yeah. No. But that I, one, I agree. hands down. That one hands down is yeah. amazing. Okay, give me uh, a movie poster <laughs> for this one <laughs> and your tagline, then we can go watch it. Um, it's a wash in blue. Okay. Um, different shades of blue. Okay, that's big. And okay. it's a field. Uh huh. And there's fallen soldiers on the field. Oh, okay. Yeah, and I don't know. It says some. It's some. It, that's it. That's all I've got. I know nothing. <laughs> we stop asking. I love questions. asking you that one. <laughs> okay, I'm done. Let's go check it out. Okay, let's do it.
marooned on a desolate planet. He is a soldier, alone with his enemy. Don't you understand English, toad face? I don't love you and you don't love me. We're stranded here, you understand? His suspicion will change <laughs> to tolerance. You saved my life. Why? I need to look at another face, even as ugly as yours. Tolerance will lead to friendship. We should open up a little place here. I could ruin the food. You could scare away the customers. <laughs> and with that friendship will come an overwhelming responsibility. You must be a parent. Don't get around, Jerry. You must take my place. Protecting a life he values more than his own. Dennis Quaid, Louis Gossett Jr., Wolfgang Peterson's Enemy Mine. You know, after watching that movie, I only ever have one thing to say. What? <laughs> 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 I was so off. Oh, uh, you were really off. I yeah. was so off. Except yeah. one thing. One thing. There's Tell a me. lot of blue on the on the cover <laughs> of the on, like the movie poster. Yeah, yeah. But do you want to hear the tagline? Yes, I do. Enemies because they were taught to be survivors because they had to be. Oh, that's good. Yeah. See, I'm glad that's not my job. And here's the the um, movie poster. <laughs> I love that poster. <laughs> oh my goodness! Yeah, the it, it really. Uh, it just captures well the things I love about the movie, which is the interpersonal relationship between those two. But anyway. Wait, there's more. Go ahead. Enemies because they were taught to be allies because they had to be brothers because they dared to be. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> that's so good. Wow. wow. That's that's deep. It is. That's deep. I, um, wow. Anyway, you want to give us a quick summary of this one? Sure. It was nothing like what I thought it was going to be. This was a this was a sci fi movie. Yeah, it was. People, sci fi. Yeah, um, so there's like a war going on in space between humans and the Drax, which mm. are alien creatures. Mm -hmm. And Dennis Quaid is the spider pilot, and he is like going after another fighter pilot from the enemy, um, Drac. Yeah fleet or whatever yeah yeah and they shoot each other down on a planet and they crash on the planet i mean dennis quaid he's totally human hothead like he right. could have just let him go but he wanted to make sure he was dead because his friend died yeah yeah, yeah. and mm -hmm. so he was getting revenge his right? wingman yeah uh -huh. yeah yeah and then he ended up crashing because of he wanted revenge yeah, yeah you know yep yeah. mm -hmm. and so the other they're both stuck there and they strike up this unlikely partnership um, to yeah. survive, like help each other survive. Yeah. And at first, it's um, he, he tries to sneak up on the alien and kill him, mm -hmm. but the alien totally like is onto him and yeah, and um, captures him and mm -hmm. makes him his like um, prisoner. Yeah. Ties yeah. him up. Um, but then there's like this meteor shower that happens, and mm -hmm. they quickly just try to like he cuts them loose and they just try to help each other survive. Yeah. Um, but it's actually over the time that they spend on this planet, they get to know each other. And mm -hmm. um, Dennis Quaid gets to learn the Drax culture language. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And it actually is a really sweet story. It is. I totally want to read the book that it's based on. I'm still, uh, I mean, I was looking to see if you were going to cry at any point. And I, you know, I don't think you ever did. There's some moving parts in the movie, too. There were, yeah. So you were stone cold. <laughs> well, so one of the moving parts is that the alien, the mm -hmm. Drac, who's mm -hmm. played by Louis Gossett Jr., mm -hmm. he, it, it can have babies on its own. 
Yeah, they're asexual. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. So at one point he's like expecting. Yeah. <laughs> and he has a child, but he dies in childbirth. Yep. Oh, and then um, he makes Davidge promise to raise his son and like kind of impart the cultural knowledge that he needs to know on yep. him. And um, so he does and he becomes uncle to the boy. Oh, my gosh. It's just so. Yeah. I, I have no words for it. It's just um, it was just really, really sweet. You know, <laughs> as I was thinking about this movie and as we're talking about it, there are two movies that I think of that I've seen that remind this feels like an amalgam of those movies. Oh, what ones? And neither of them are sci fi movies. Huh. One, Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. <laughs> You, you're looking at me in disbelief, right? So Yeah, so which one is that? Is that that's the, the one, one with Kevin Alan, Costner. Kevin Costner? Yeah. Okay. Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. Oh my gosh, I barely remember that movie. Okay, You've seen on. it though, right? I've seen it, yeah, yeah. Okay, so in that movie, Kevin Costner is the, you know, he's the crusader and stuff and he gets captured and this is all in the preamble of the movie, like in the okay. beginning of it. And then he gets rescued by Morgan Freeman's character and he's a Muslim and, you know, Kevin Costner's the Christian crusader and then they form this unlikely like relationship and and of mutual trust and respect and there's a lot of like layers there in the movie with them that they weave in there's even like the um you know just just like having a completely different faith structure and and worldview and all that anyway the relationship between these two kind of reminded me of that too because also in the beginning in robin hood prince of thieves when you see him he's got like the crazy beard and crazy long hair and a crazy big beard which is what you see dennis quaid uh, eventually looking like after being there for years the other movie is, um, oh my goodness, I'm blanking. It's the Tom Hanks one where he, Castaway? Is that what it's called? Yeah, Castaway. Castaway. Where he's- Wilson. Yeah. Yeah, that one. Just because- Oh, because you're. it's a survival. It's literally like you're following the course of like a year. This movie is like three years, but you're, it's literally like life. Right. Like just surviving. Yeah. So- it feels like a weird amalgam of those movies. Interesting. Okay, so I don't know if I've seen Robin Hood. Oh my goodness. Prince of Thieves. Does well, it have Alan Rickman in it? The thing Yes, it does. Okay, okay. So I've seen that one, but I don't remember anything of what, what you I'm, just described. The thing I'm talking about. We need about to watch that is, again. We do. It's a great movie. The thing I'm talking about happens in the very beginning of the movie. It's like <laughs> the precursor stuff. Like it's very short. Okay. But it's something I'd never seen in any other Robin Hood movies, like True. touched upon. Yeah, right. And they mention it. He's off in the wars, which were the Crusades, you know, but they kind of like showed it and he's about to literally get his, I don't want to spoil anything for you. We'll watch it again. It's just been a long yeah. time. Anyway, this movie kind of like had definite vibes from that. And it's like a, I can't say a bromance, right? So it, this movie's kind of <laughs> like a bro, I don't know. No, it is like a bromance. A bromance movie? Definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, anyway. There's a lot of like um anger between the two of them and oh, yeah. like a lot of uh a lot of fighting. Like Davidge has really weird comebacks sometimes where he he gets touchy <laughs> about really you know, just random things and mm-hmm. some things like set him off or whatever. But um I feel like they did that to like get to the whole like you start to kind of go crazy, stir crazy. Yes, yeah. And the entire time I was watching this too, I was like this movie would hit a lot differently, like during the pandemic, like because everybody was in that state of mind where they were for a while there during the lockdowns, where you're kind of trapped, like you know? isolated, exactly, or mm-hmm. isolated. So yeah, this this movie would hit differently watching it then. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. But um, but yeah, the I think that they use that as a tool. Him being kind of like random like that to show like the tension of the isolation and the stress of the situation. It was very stressful. Yeah, totally. Because they were on this planet that didn't have, it wasn't like a welcoming, no. wonderful, lush yeah. Eden or anything yeah, yeah, like yeah. that. It was like a like barren. Volcanic and yeah, Right. Yeah, yeah, totally. So um, what were your, what were your favorite parts of the movie? Wow. Um, I liked a lot of the movie. I mm-hmm. liked... Um, watching their relationship open up Mm -hmm. and i liked dennis quaid like learning the language and like finally kind of like instead of dismissing it out of hand Mm -hmm. um coming around to being curious Mm -hmm. and learning his language and there was like this book that he went through that was really like part of their religion yeah Yeah, yeah. that he uh, like he adopted Mm -hmm. um i loved Oh, some different scenes. Okay, so like there's this 
um, this creature that comes, like there's a sand pit. It's the tongue creature? Yeah, and yeah, there's yeah. this creature uh-huh. that kind of comes out. Yeah. And it's this tall, spindly, mm-hmm. almost vine, or it's like a snake sort yeah. of thing. Yeah, yeah, And it will attack whatever fell into its sand pit. Mm-hmm. Um, but it, it gets this like turtle-like creature, but it can't eat the shell. Yep, yep. And there's this part where like Dennis Quaid has this eureka moment where he realizes the shells will protect Mm-hmm. them from and the he kind of just shells. starts stumping on yeah. the shells yeah that's a great moment where he's like yeah i don't know like sees the potential in mm-hmm. this like cast off thing mm-hmm. um and then they build this great shelter which is awesome yeah um but then oh go ahead uh, just the acting was just really good in it this was one. amazing like sometimes it'd be a little i think the hokiest thing was some of the effects from the spaceships and stuff were a bit dated yeah but it's still it held up enough. It had a very Flash Gordon feel to me. Like when the <laughs> ships were moving in the dogfights, it didn't feel like they were moving. You yeah. know what I mean? All of the outer space stuff, yeah. everything that was off planet yeah. felt hokey yeah, yeah, to yeah. me and mm-hmm. like did not hold up at all. Mm-hmm. But they put all of their effort into the alien makeup. Oh. And like yeah. that is where you're just taken in because Lewis Gossett Jr. looks incredible. Yeah. His face... Um, the things that are moving, like the the weird squishy pads on the side of his yeah, face, yeah, that like inflate. And so stuff. realistic. Mm-hmm. They just like that is where you can tell they put all of their energy and time and money to like totally to build up the story. Um, he like a linguist invented the language mm-hmm. that he was speaking. I think it had snippets of Russian and stuff in it too, like but it was, backwards Russian, right? Yeah, it was backwards Russian. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, but his it, he carried the movie for me. Oh, Lewis totally. Gossett Jr. Like it was amazing. It, yeah. Like watching like the body language he used, you know? Yeah. Uh the noises he made, like he made up a lot of those. And it was kind of like his the ha right, right. noises. Like he just kind of did that and came up with that. And it's so off-putting at first, because mm-hmm. you're thinking, like, how am I gonna understand him in this movie? This is like we have a whole movie to go <laughs> yeah. with this guy doing this. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. how am I gonna understand him? Yeah. But it, it's kind of like they did that on purpose, mm-hmm. like to make you feel like Davidge. So you yeah. eventually do get to understand what he's saying and mm-hmm. he learns more English. Yeah. And so, yeah, the communication becomes better. But like that was that was the most amazing part of the movie. You're just you're just marveling mm-hmm. at like what he's doing with his voice and his body and his ma- and the makeup. And they did like full body alien suit too there were mm-hmm. scenes where he had zero clothes on like mm-hmm. you could see his tail and everything and it all looked really good yeah also too that's what reminded me of robin Hood prince of thieves too is there's a scene <laughs> where kevin costner's bathing in a waterfall and there's rocks and stuff and you see him like run away naked or something so i thought of that when i was watching oh when i was watching the drag run naked out of the water i was like oh my goodness this is like robin Hood. did you make this connection with that movie when you first watched it like a, uh, like whenever you watched it no, before or no. just it was this time no i think i saw this movie before robin hood prince of thieves was okay. like made okay <laughs> yeah anyway another connection between those movies <laughs> this is, this is now a big i want to stretch do, i want to okay. do a side by side of those scenes <laughs> <laughs> that pool oh. where in yeah. the beginning he was the the alien was swimming Mm-hmm. And um, Dennis Quaid tries to like catch him and capture him, and he like yeah. sets the top of the water on fire. A fire yeah. yeah, that pool. They also filmed um, Never Ending Story. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. In that pool. Uh huh. Uh huh. <laughs> and other movies I haven't seen. Totally. Yeah. Well, you know why that is, right? No. Why? Do you know who the director was of this movie? No. Wolfgang Peterson. That's a nice name. It's. <laughs> Who's Wolfgang Peterson? You know what's crazy? <clears throat> he uh, directed one of your favorite childhood movies. And you just referenced it. The Never Ending Story? He directed The Never Ending <gasps> Story. Yeah. Uh, yes. And I had no idea or concept oh. of who directed movies when I saw that for the first time. I just remember the indelible mark it made on my psyche and scarred me. And, and it was amazing <laughs> and wonderful. Um, but... The first, like, when I first started getting into film, like, in in a more intellectual level, like in high school, I took a course in high school where I just watched certain films and would write papers on them, right? And one of the first films I watched, it was Das Boot, which is a Wolfgang Peterson film. Yeah, okay. And I remember that was with VHS, and it was like two VHS tapes. So when you held the the movie, it was like you're holding a brick. I've not seen uh, it's, that. It's really I, I I can't remember the running time. It's 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 like a Marvel movie. Like it's like <laughs> I think it's close to three hours, if not three hours. Did you like it? Is it a good movie? <sighs> uh, or was it 
it, it it's a it's a very immersive, realistic movie, hmm. like a World War II submarine. So, oh, wow. like, it is not for everybody, I guess, is the big pause I had there. Like, unless you want to see a realistic World War II German German perspective, like, yeah, yeah. submarine movie, don't watch it. But, <laughs> like, <laughs> I it, think it, it really, like, set the tone for a lot of, like, just how things are filmed, too, in movies like that. Like, you've oh, probably okay. seen derivative, like scenes in other movies whenever you see submarine movies and stuff. so that's the significance yeah. and why you were yeah. assigned to that movie I he's see. german though and uh, and in munich that's where the sound stages were so okay. yeah he of course it's like um it's like uh he like he's like a lot of directors they have certain places they like to film because they have their studios there right like right. peter jackson has his studios in new zealand you know so lucky yeah. you know i think wolfgang is a name that just should come back we don't use that name enough i really do I, and wolf i mean wolf you could just call him wolf for short if you don't want to go the full you know gamut wolfie wolfie i love it um so what were some of your favorite scenes in the movie wait i didn't get to all of mine but Please, you go first no, and well, then i'll add on i mean i just love uh, I just love Louis Gossett. Like when when he finds out he's pregnant, seeing him like doting on the baby and like sewing and stuff is really mm-hmm. cute. Mm-hmm. Think about when this movie was made too. The idea that this creature you thought was a man would have a baby was just like so mind blowing, especially in the culture in like 1980s. Like, mm-hmm. so it was very uh, just turned everything on its head. Um, I also liked. I like when the baby, what was the baby's name again? Zemis. 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 When he, <laughs> um, when he was teaching him how to play football. Yeah. That was really cute. That's a great scene. And the kid who played him was really good as well. I know. That's another yeah. thought I had. I was like, oh, how good is this kid going to be? Because he's mm-hmm. like, we just saw Louis Gossett Jr. for the, you know, yeah. first third of two thirds of the movie. Yeah. He is really, really good. I, I really like movies that they show humans to be the barbarians that they are you know like Mm. like because humans are barbaric like they go and they destroy ecosystems and other people and even if if they have the best intentions right and then when you have these like alien species that are supposed to be the you know what do they call them again crab faces or something and and then they're they're in the savage category yeah exactly like and they're the bigger person so to speak yeah, so I enjoy films like that. Yeah, and they also have um, culture and gentleness, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and um, they love their kids like we love our kids. Yeah, yeah. 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 What were your other favorite scenes? Uh, well, I when the boy came <clears throat> in, I loved the scenes of him calling David uncle, mm-hmm. and um, just kind of his growing up and learning all of his things. And I liked when they started to. They moved to the cave. Mm-hmm. I liked all the scenes, like kind of showing the landscape. Mm-hmm. Um, and so when they they moved to the cave because of that big collapse onto their yeah the sand monster thing attacked them right. in the dead of winter. So then their structure was just gone. Yeah. So they had to like retire to the cave. Yeah. yeah. And all the things they did for survival, like how they mm-hmm. ate really gross things, and mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. I liked all of that. Survival stories are fun. They yeah. really are. Yeah. And this had a unique enough twist where you have like a person, a creature who's not something you're used to that it made it really interesting. Yeah. Because it wasn't just about survival. It was yeah. like getting to know the place where they are. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, for the record, though, yet another case in which kids ruin everything. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> he very firmly tells the kid, don't, don't go do this thing. <laughs> and then he goes and he does it. And then it gets him shot. So. Yeah. They have that. Movies always make the kids seem stupid, but it's mm-hmm. not. The, that the kid is unintelligent is it's because of the kid's curiosity yeah. mm-hmm. and that's a that's a wonderful thing mm-hmm. um mm-hmm. so maybe we could look at it that way i don't know we could it's wonderful i just got shot in the chest <laughs> <laughs> that part is like oh when you think he dies yeah like i did i thought he was dead yeah yeah i was totally. like what's going what where's no. the movie going exactly yeah, totally. i really didn't know where the movie was going oh like <laughs> One of the random funny facts about this movie is like, with the, I can't remember if it was the producers, but they thought that people wouldn't get the title, Enemy Mine. So they're like, we got to put a mine in it. We got to <laughs> literally have a mine. So, you know, people will know why it's called Enemy Mine. <laughs> I was making a lot of fun of the title yeah. um, before I knew what the movie was about. Well, I mean, as far as I know, the book did not have a mine in it. It's just about, you know, the survival and whatnot. But like they, of course, added the plot line of the miners coming and treating the drags badly. And yeah. so 
Yeah. Actually, another scene that I really like is when the Drax kind of like, um, th- there's a group of them and mm-hmm. they're slaves. Mm-hmm. And um, Davidge goes in to like save yeah. the boy. And he kind of like makes a connection with the Drax and they're like, oh, you're Davidge and your uncle or whatever. Yeah. And so there's like this understanding that happens. And it's like, it's yeah. like the first ripple that's going to go outward. Yeah. So you feel like maybe there'll <clears> be some more understanding between these two. I species. Yeah, I really like moments in like that too, uh, in life as well as movies, where like literally they they were just walled off, you know. And then the second he used their language, you could just see the the barriers start to fall, you know. Mm-hmm. It reminds me of when we were in Ghana, yeah. and I just we just walk we learned some chui, and we would just walk into a room and speak the native language, and they would be like, "What." <laughs> You, what <laughs> well and we were speaking it so poorly it would oh, take yeah. them a minute to realize totally. what we were trying to do yes yes <laughs> but it was sweet that we were trying was the whole yeah mm-hmm. um so is this a cult classic like do people is this like a big deal in the in you know what i mean like is yeah. this part a, of the sci-fi canon that everyone should watch uh i mean i would say the uniqueness of it and the fact that it's a wolfgang peterson film would make it a must like it has great performances the actors right um the director is great and it's a story like one you've probably never seen Mm -hmm. i can't think except for the movies i listed which are very tangentially related i can't think of another movie off the top of my head that's like is an experience like this like it's pretty singular so i would say if you're a sci-fi fan you should definitely watch it yeah but could we also draw a connection between this movie and the lost boys (laughs) because <laughs> i could oh you want to go no i'm not going there i'm just saying i probably could but keep going um die hard with the vengeance because <laughs> john mcclain yes john and, McClain. and zeus yes they are completely different yes they true. are so different and they learn they learn they are put together and That's they have true. to like it's the odd couple it is mm-hmm. it is i like mm-hmm. stories like that that's nice um so i saw a thread online about this movie that like some people think it's time to to reboot it. That, really? Yeah, that the that the original one was too hokey and it didn't oh. do the book justice. Okay. Well, I mean, I guess that's the Dune conundrum. <laughs> like it, people didn't like the movie Dune and how it didn't stick to the book and all that. This came out around the same time and this was like this cost a lot of money. Original yeah. the original Dune, do you No, mean? this movie, Enemy Mine. It but was. You said it came out around the same time. Correct. Is the original Dune movie? Yeah. Okay. okay. Stephen, I'm blanking. I almost said Stephen Lynch, but he's a comedian. Anyway, <laughs> um, yeah, it came out around the same time. David Lynch, that's the name. You know David Lynch. Yeah, yeah. He didn't yeah. direct it, but he was tapped maybe to direct it. He directed Dune. I know, but he. Yeah. He was considered for this one too. Oh yeah, yeah. Because mm-hmm. yeah. it was the sci-fi type. Yeah. yeah space opera type stuff. So. Um. Hmm. I haven't seen the original Dune either. Oh, haven't you? No. That's interesting. Okay. But I'm afraid to say that because I David Lynch movies, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> You're afraid? Okay. Sometimes well, they're not my my cup of tea. They're enemy mine for you? That was a joke because they're your enemy. That was great. There's no mine involved. <laughs> Although there is because there's the spice. Oh, it works on so many levels. <laughs> All right. So what is your movie New Year's resolution? Do you have one? Watch more. <laughs> you're laughing because you know how many i watch um my movie new year's resolution is to watch more movies that at least once a month watch a movie i, I probably normally wouldn't like unexpected movies whoa okay that's you know? cool it's respectable i mean uh barbie's the first example i think of i'm probably it was hilarious i loved it mm-hmm. i would probably even further than that, though, I really want to go outside my comfort zone because I thought I would like Barbie when I saw the preview. I didn't even see a preview, actually. I just thought I would like it. OK, but it, it doesn't seem like a movie I would necessarily gravitate towards. But it was awesome. Oh, I have a couple. I could. You got a couple ideas? Yeah, I do. I have a couple okay. ideas. What about you? Do you have a movie New Year's resolution? Um, Yeah, I want to get a couple more um, guests on the podcast. Oh, OK. So that's right. my resolution. That's your to resolution? include some more guests. Yep. OK. <laughs> do you. um? Do you have anything else? Like, I was curious what you thought about the technology. I'm moving back to the movie here. Yeah. The technology yeah. of the aliens. What did you think of it? Um, It was just, it didn't really stand out. It was kind of convenient, right? Mm-hmm. It's just like, 
powerful technology with mm-hmm. no explanation. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't <clears throat> it doesn't really factor into the movie at all, except in the kind of the beginning. Yeah. Um that's, so that's fair. It True. really didn't nothing about it like stood out to me where I was like, oh, I want that in my yeah. life. <laughs> yeah. If you could be an alien species that was fundamentally different from the human race, what would it be? Like what would it be like? I'd like to be able to breathe underwater. Oh. And so, and air to like go between the two. You want to be Aquaman? I don't want to be Aquaman. <laughs> I want to be Aqua Woman. Aqua Woman, okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, that's what I would do. That's, I think that's what I, what I would pick. What about you? I really like the, um, the whole symbiosis thing. Like, think like Venom, you know, where there's like a creature that can't exist or function without another and they kind of bond. Okay. I like that. I'd probably play with something like that. Oh, wow. Yeah. But then you're in debt to another creature and you're you reliant on it. Yeah, you are. But it's an interesting uh, conflict to play with, like story wise. See, with mine, I could explore the ocean floor. Mm. And it's true. And that's like, like, so like, no one knows mm. everything mm-hmm. in the mm-hmm. depths. Mm-hmm. Maybe I could find like the largest squid. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's fair. You could find Aquaman. <laughs> Uh, there's another, oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh no, I thought we were wrapping up. No, I want to know. There was Wolfgang Peterson. You don't know any other films he's done. I, I just need to mention another one of his films that was pretty go for it. crazy, like growing up. Outbreak. <gasps> Do you remember that movie? Is that the one? The Outbreak Monkey. Yeah. With Brad Pitt. <laughs> no, that's World War Z. No, 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 no. Okay. Outbreak. I'm thinking of, we referenced it all the time during COVID. Everybody, no, that's Contagion. Oh, that's Contagion. And okay. that's Matt Damon, not okay. Brad Pitt. So you're <laughs> just all over the map on this. I am, I am. Wait, okay. So Outbreak, the Outbreak Monkey. You've had I'm getting it movie. mixed up with, I've seen it, but I'm okay. getting it mixed up in my mind with 12 Monkeys. Oh, yeah. That's Brad Pitt movie. <laughs> But also Bruce Willis was in that. Yes, correct. Um, Okay, so wait, back to Outbreak. Who's in Outbreak? (laughs) Well, there's a monkey. (laughs) Yeah. I think it's Colobus Monkey, if I remember right. And after he did that movie- I don't want to know about the monkey. Well, after he did that, he went on to star in Friends, if I recall correctly. Oh my gosh. He was Ross's monkey. (laughs) Oh my gosh. Yeah, I know. Random. Um, Dustin Hoffman is in this one? (gasps) Yes. Okay. 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 I'm with you. You got it? Yeah. Okay. And Cuba Gooding Jr. Right. And Rene Russo, if I remember right. Okay. Yes, we've referenced Outbreak Monkey for so long. I've kind of forgotten where it came from. That was the first movie that like, I remember seeing that was like scary about viral yes. things. Yeah. yeah. Which, you know, in the 90s, it was 95. And until then, or since then, it was only when Contagion came out mm-hmm. that I was all, the fear was reignited. <laughs> Contagion was like way too real. Yeah, that was, oh. Oh, yeah. I still don't want to watch that one. I'm not Although ready. I, I kind of do, but I don't. <laughs> I'm glutton for punishment. So he directed Outbreak. Yes. Got it. Okay. Connections made. Woo. Yeah. So those are pretty, like when I think back through history of my, my own life history with movies, those are never ending stories. A very formative movie for me. Yeah. Outbreak as well Ditto. as I was because, you know, as a teenager and seeing that. True. So it's pretty interesting. Yeah. Um, what if any messages do you think were in this film, <laughs> Melissa? Um, the message is pretty obvious. Is it? Is it really? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like t- <laughs> the message is that you, you have to look beyond like the cover of uh, someone and okay. um, that even when you are, so, when you think you are so different mm-hmm. from another creature, mm-hmm. um, there's a lot there that you have in common and there's things that you can relate to. Okay. All and right. you shouldn't be, I don't know, at war or even, um, I'm sorry, <laughs> words are not coming today, That's okay. but you shouldn't like treat, them differently because they're you think mm-hmm. they're so different from you because you're actually probably a lot more like than you think okay i could see how one would see that <laughs> and what would you like to say is the message of this movie i 100 percent know what the message of this movie is what always have a birth plan <laughs> you never want to be caught without one. Oh, sammy's mm. he did his best he didn't have a birth plan it's true. But he did his best in the circumstances. He did. He did. But I'm just saying, 
You got to have that birth plan because you never know when it's going to happen. You never know. You never know. <laughs> All right. Well, this is a great way to kick weird off the new way year. to ring in the new year. Hey, you know, you're you're sloughing off the old ideas and thoughts and philosophy right. and you are embracing a new year. Let's do that. Let's do that. That's a wrap. That's a wrap.